Okay, so this is Franco. I'm the founder of SASMQL. I'm here with uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Beaton from uh, Insights. And uh, Insight is one of, is, Insights is one of our top clients. And so I'm here with him today. Thanks for joining us, Jonathan. Cool, thanks, Franco. So I wanted to ask you first, if you can introduce yourself and, uh, and what's your background and what's your role at Insights? Sure. So. Uh, well, it's an interesting question right now, right? So my my role at Insights, I, I led the marketing team, right? I was a VP of marketing. Uh, and as of a couple of weeks ago, I'm the senior, demar- senior director of marketing uh, at, at Rapid7, right? So we, uh, we have just been uh, acquired. That's awesome news. In fact, it was all over all over the press a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, over the all over the press and, uh, and, and a few places a little before we wanted it to be all over the press, but uh, yeah, it's been a pretty smooth transition so far. Perfect. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about Insights and what you guys do? Yeah, so Insights is a cybersecurity company that uh, you know develops uh, external threat intelligence software. You know, generally speaking, you know, threat intelligence has been you know, kind of a, a, a tool that's only been ex- accessible to what we like to call the security 1%, right? So uh, Insights is, has been on a mission since its, uh, its founding to kind of democratize threat intelligence and, and bring that uh, to those folks outside of that security 1%. That's perfect. And, uh, you know, we've been working together now since late December last year, so about eight, eight, eight months, about eight months now. Um, so my question for you is when we started working together, like what was the problem that you wanted to solve or like what was the opportunity that you, you were seeing that kind of pointed you to us? Well, you know, I think, you know, in cyber, generally speaking, events are, you know, a, a core producer of pipeline and obviously, uh, as a VC backed startup, uh, at, you know, marketing leader at a VC backed startup, a lot of uh, my job is based on generating pipeline for the sales team, right? And we have to two X every year. So, you know, we were looking to expand our ABM motion. Uh, it was not as sophisticated as I probably would have liked to have seen it internally. Um, you know, there's not just targeting, but there's operational challenges when you implement ABM. And I needed a partner that not only kind of had the playbook, but kind of the operational chops and the ability to help us kind of implement it fast, right? Because we had some fairly aggressive 2021 numbers. Perfect. And, uh, you know, we started from the beginning with this program, coordinating direct mail and LinkedIn ads and, and email touches. And we saw fairly quickly uh, some tractions there. Um, what we saw working really well was this uh, particular direct mail offer. Was it something you tried in the past of integrating offline channels into these um, more digital touches? Yes, but we, we struggled to do it uh, at scale, right? I think, you know, the concept of uh, direct mail is fairly well known, um, but integrating direct mail you know, to, to sales outreach, LinkedIn, and having the data kind of work uh, cohesively behind the scenes, not just to, you know, to optimize for effectiveness, but also to avoid collisions, you know, et cetera, right, to be truly effective. Like, it's a, it's definitely an operational challenge, and we hadn't solved that yet internally. And uh, I remember at the beginning, we worked quite a bit on, on the list together, you guys have a lot of data in terms of scoring accounts and accounts intent and, and looking at the data sources to make sense of what accounts we should target first and what was the, the biggest opportunity. And uh, we saw success within like a couple of months. Can you tell us a little bit about the results that you have seen so far in the last, uh, you know, five, six months? Sure. So, you know, you know we were at a, a position in our business where we we truly understood who we were targeting and why we were targeting them, which I think, you know, is a fundamental 
you know, aspect of have you know, you know, creating a, a successful ABM motion. So it wasn't, you know, surprising to me necessarily that once we put the pieces together, we had success, right? So, um, you know, you know, I were looking at data prior, prior to our discussion here, right? And it's it's pretty obvious the impact, right? So, you know, as a business that's having uh, to 2x quarter over quarter, right? Q2, 24% of our pipeline marketing driven was uh, from our ABM program. Uh, and then, you know, an even bigger jump in Q2 where we're seeing upwards of 40% of our pipeline being driven by this program. So, you know, if you think about it, you know, we'll probably generate as much pipeline in Q3 of this year from our ABM program as we generated in all of Q3 last year, total marketing program pipeline. This is something we can see from from my team as well because we have a you know we have a notification every time there is a, a positive engagement from a target account and your uh, your notification keeps ringing <laughs> like constant. <laughs> uh... Well, you know, I'll give a shout out to uh, troops a little bit here because I also get a, no a Slack notification every time uh, an opportunity is created from the program and also in the in the channel that you guys set up. So. So even when I'm on the golf course, I can still see that ops are uh, coming through. And and I do have to shout out on your team because they they've been fantastic at jumping at it like very quickly. There's never been like a, a drop off from from handoff to opportunity. Has always been very smooth. They are like working very very efficiently and effectively. Uh, yeah, so I that think, that helps. I think we have, you know. You know, because obviously I was pretty heavily involved too where we kicked things off, um, you know, and uh, fortunately have a have a pretty solid team and you guys have obviously been a great partner as well. So I've been able to be a little hands off um, here recently, but we have super tight marketing uh, and SDR alignment, which, you know, yeah. I think, you know, if you were to ask me success, right, it's understanding, you know, who you're selling to, why you're selling to them, but then that alignment between marketing and SDR is, uh, you know, super important to make this work. Absolutely. And it helped that we were working, you know, week on a weekly basis with someone from your marketing team as well as the SDR team. So everything is very 100% aligned. And, uh, you know, we had fun uh, experimenting with different direct mail offers, uh, different, different type of giveaways and messaging and, that's where we drive a lot of this conversion because you guys are doing an awesome job also warming up these accounts in other across other channels, including virtual events and webinar, email marketing. And then uh, we are getting a ton of conversion once we integrate the direct mail touch. Um, can I ask you also what type of companies are you typically targeting that uh, sees value in this solution that we're seeing in the DBM program? Yeah, I mean, our, our target accounts, and like I said, you know, democratizing threat intelligence, but, you know, that includes a lot of Fortune 500 accounts, Fortune 1000 accounts, you know, down to your, you know, let's call it five to 10,000 employee range accounts, but all, all businesses that, you know, the, you know, the CISO or your more senior cyber folks, um, you know, they're, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty busy, right? So you have to earn their attention. And I think this program has done a great job doing that. Yeah, and we saw that across every channel, even on the LinkedIn ads, we're getting uh, very senior people from, from large enterprise downloading your content, which clearly resonates uh, with them. And then we are able to retarget them with email and direct mail and getting that conversion. Yeah, I would say, you know, you know, even as short as two, three, four years ago, you know, the single touch to, you know, an SDR cadence worked, right? But, you know, everyone's getting funded right now, right? There's no shortage of VC money floating around. You know, marketing is getting even more saturated. And I think the days, you know, I, you know, obviously you hear a lot about uh, brand being an important lover, but you know the days of single touch conversions are are in the in the review, right? Like you are overspending on your marketing programs 
if you were single touch only and not putting in them into a more intimate kind of ABM sequence. It's just the way things are now. Yeah, that's what I also noticed. If we do just LinkedIn ads, it's gonna the your CAC will skyrocket and the conversion will be pretty small. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, you know, even for virtual events now and virtual events, and I'm sure every marketer can relate to this, right? Like the cost per op, the CAC, you know, is is through the roof, but we have found vendors i mean you got to do something right like when, when events aren't there you still have to find ways to generate pipeline like this this doesn't stop obviously um and we have found ways to work with you know really high quality vendors and add on kind of that SaaS mql abm program to get our cat costs in a, in a range where uh you know our finance team doesn't uh you know, scream at me too loud exactly and uh, my last question for you is, uh, so would you recommend other SaaS companies? Uh, would you recommend them to work with us? And if yes, uh, why? Yeah, so, you know, listen, one of the things, you know, I'm an old school Marketo veteran, like, uh, like Franco here, um, you know, so we didn't, we didn't know each other prior to this engagement. And I would, I would presume we probably, you know, cross paths at some early Marketo conferences back in the day. Um, but it's it's kind of that breed of marketer that's that's brought been brought up doing this at every level and gets it. So a lot of my initial trust was obviously a new Franco. Uh, and then, you know, as I've as I've worked with you, right, the results speak for themselves and the and the quality of the team that you've built uh you know has also been a huge advantage. So it's uh it's a no-brainer for me. Awesome. Thank you, Jonathan. I really appreciate it. And thank you for all the, the, the good words and for uh, taking part to this interview. Cool. Likewise, Franco. <laughs>